All right, today we're talking about the new fuel systems for the 6th gen Camaro, 3rd gen CTSV, and the ATSV. Um, this is the pump module here. Um, this is a two pump assembly, clearly, and we also have a three pump assembly as well. Um, this is not a drop in to the tank and be done with it type of thing. This is part of a comprehensive fuel system upgrade. It requires a feed line, a return line, external filtration, external regulator, and we're using this to feed the high pressure fuel pump pump. And you can use it also to feed port injection and nitrous on top of it, since it's way more than what the high pressure pump can handle by itself. So um, just a quick intro of how this works and how it's configured. So on the top here, let's start there. All right, this is shown with the hosens on here, and this is how we're gonna be configuring the fuel system. Um, this here is the, for the tank vent or evap. This is the feed line. This is the return line here. And going to the bottom here, you can just see the tank vent just simply passes through to the bottom inside and connects to the factory lines inside the tank. We have on the back side of it, we have provisions to accommodate the OE fuel pressure sensor. And then these two fittings on top here, on the side I should say, um, in this area here, these uh, interface to the factory Venturi jet setup. So the factory Venturi jet setup works as you would expect it in the factory configuration, albeit you will need to respect slightly higher fuel levels than normal. Um, good thing is, is the new fuel tanks on these cars is a better form factor than what we had on the previous generation cars, which was a whole lot of um, problems, um, as you guys know, with the uh, low aspect design. This one's a bit taller, and the ATSV and the CTSV have some pretty extensive baffling inside the tank, so we think it's gonna work out better. But at the same time, it also kind of complicates the installation. Now, this piece here drops in the tank just as it is. It's not like the Corvette where you gotta take it apart and get it back to, and put it back together like inside the tank. This drops in, you can just install the level sender outside the fuel tank and it drops in the tank and you can connect the lines from outside the tank. Now, we're gonna go through a little video out in the shop here showing one of the pre-production models and show you how you, the sequence in which you need to connect those lines inside the tank so you can get through the installation. Now, the Camaro is a bit easier than the CTSV and ATSV simply because the baffling is not so extensive inside the tank. So keep that in mind, but still try to respect what we have going on here with the order and the sequence. But we think this video is going to be helpful. We're always available for you to give us a call if you have any questions. Okay, this is the fuel tank for the CTSV. The ATSV is very similar. The Camaro is also similar, but a little more simplified since it doesn't have the baffling. We've uh, sectioned it away so we can see what's going on or just demonstrate what's going on during the installation. So there's four lines inside the tank. The um, one that's connected, it's to a valve on the left-hand side of the frame. You can't see it. Um, don't worry about that, but we're concerned about the three that are unconnected right now. The bottom most large line is the tank vent, and the two upper lines do the uh, fuel transfer system. Uh, the one on the left, it's, it's a Venturi jet system. The one on the left is the Venturi jet discharge, and the one on the right is the feed. Now let's move around to the other side and uh, take a look at the baffle system and you can see how it kind of encroaches on where the pump module is going to be. But it's important that the, uh, the order, I guess the, high, the orientation of the sequence of these um, lines that are inside the tank is uh, respected. Otherwise they're going to get crossed up and you're just not going to get it down inside the tank. This is an unrehearsed installation so bear with my struggles here. Um, so we start by um, reaching in and grabbing the two small lines for the transfer system and then the whole pump assembly, the level sender is going to be wired up already um, and all the pumps are going to be connected. So those wires are not going to be in the way so um, bear with that. So easy to f first connect the feed line for the Venturi jet system. And then before I connect the, um, the discharge line, I need to reach down and um, extract that tank vent line because I need to make sure it's, it remains below all the other lines, uh, the other two lines, I should say. Uh, the, um, in hindsight, I should have connected a string or a wire to the uh, tank vent line so I could reach in and extract it easily. Because I, I tore my hand up a little bit on this when I reach in to grab it. Uh, so anyways, you can see I kind of struggled with it. If you've got bigger hands, definitely a problem. So uh, right now I'm just making sure the orientation is correct. And you'll see that the next one I want to connect is the uh, discharge line for the Venturi jet system. And it's pretty easy to do once you've got the tank out, the pump module kind of outside the tank like this. And then finally you want to connect the uh, tank fin line like this. And it's pretty easy as well. 
you won't be worrying about that, but do make sure they're clear. Um, you want to lay, line up the tank locator, but you see I struggle with this a little bit because the pump module is kind of offset, so it's cantilevered, and it creates a little bit of a struggle, but if those lines are all oriented in the right um, position, as we demonstrated, um, it's going to go into place, and you see it finally popped into place. And so now what I'm kind of doing here is I'm moving around the, um, all these, these uh, fittings on top are kind of orient and lock in position type of fittings, but um, don't, you don't want to lock them into place right now because it'll interfere with the uh, lock ring, which is a helmet style. But um, you want to just leave them loose at this point so that you can, uh, so they can still swivel around. And then once you get the big lock ring into place, then you can kind of finalize the orientation of them and then connect the tank vent. I'm sorry, not the tank vent, but the uh, feed and return line. And then the uh, tank vent line that I'm pointing to right now, it is in the factory um, orientation and uh, position. So reconnecting the factory line outside the tank is pretty cut and dry. And so now we're going to take a look inside the tank. So you can see the uh, level cylinder is nice and clear of everything. Those, uh, disregard that uh, level cylinder wire will be connected already and be wrapped on the other side of the tank. But you can see how the, all four lines are kind of uh, out of each other's way. Nothing's twisted, nothing's binding. And see how the uh, tank vent line is on below the uh, other two lines for the Venturi discharge and feed. And then the fourth line, like we talked about earlier, just don't mess with it. And there's a valve that that fourth line connects to on the tops there. And you can see um, now from this angle, you can see how important it is that you get those lines in that sequence. Otherwise, it's just not going to go into place.